revising a little bit here and trying not to repeat too much of what Richard Number One has said. So I'm the um, coordinator of the genetics and genomics major, and also the coordinator of honours in biological sciences, but I'll try and keep it broad for everybody. We've already talked a bit about what honours is and how it's divided up into the research component and the coursework component. Just want to add something to what Richard said about the area of study. So typically, if you've done a, a major in genetics, you would go on to do honours in genetics. But I want to point out that it's not set in stone. There's always flexibility, especially for high-performing students. So for instance, if a student came to me and had done a major in microbiology or biochemistry or developmental biology and said, oh, I want to do uh, honours in genetics, I've got a straight HD average, I would go, come on in. So there is that flexibility. You don't feel too constrained about, there's always that asterisk in the, in the requirements that, or by the discretion of the head of school or the honours coordinator. And we also mentioned the start and end dates. So there's the two cohorts in most faculties. There's the February to late October cohort and the July to mid-April cohort. So there are two possibilities for when you would do honours. I won't go too much about this because Richard's already talked about it a lot. So we've got the full year research project. You're in a real lab with your academic supervisor, postdocs, other PhD students, other honours students, research assistants. And it's a full deep dive immersion into, first of all, the literature, coming up with a project. I've got a little asterisk there, design novel project. I think some students are a little bit freaked out by the idea that they have to come up with some sort of their own project at the beginning of honours. How am I going to do that? Don't worry. All of your, research, all of your honours supervisors have taught you at undergrad, so they know where you're at with what you know. And in fact, I personally think that science is so specialised these days that it's pretty much impossible for someone with a three-year undergraduate degree to come up with a realistic project of their own. You need your supervisor to take your hand and lead you through that process. You won't be left stranded. All the skills that you require for your project will be provided by your supervisor and their team. So you don't have to stress about that. So that you'll work through experimental results, your data analysis, and the end product is a, a large piece of work, a thesis and an oral presentation. So challenging, but also highly rewarding. And then we have the, the uh, coursework unit. Again, don't want to belabor this, but the idea is to build up those transferable skills in science, biology in particular, we're super interested in quantitative skills, statistical, critical analysis, those sort of things that the employers of the future are really going to be wanting to look through you. So again, why would you want to do honours? Well, for me, this is the big one. You actually work out how science works. Because in your undergraduate degree, you, know, you read the textbooks, we give you these uh, lab exercises, which honestly, we, we set them up so you can, they work. Uh, that's how it is, you know. They usually work. Usually work. Um, and so for the first time, maybe you're getting into the lab and you're designing an experiment together with your supervisor and it doesn't work. And you're like, oh, but it always works. First year, second year, third year, it always worked. It doesn't always work. So science can be messy. It's not always linear. You might read a paper and they went from A to B to C and it all looks very smooth. In reality, you may do C first and then go back to A because you realise you've forgotten something. So science is messy, it's not always linear. And these things that I've listed up there, planning, quality control, troubleshooting, problem solving, they're all super important in a successful project. So I think knowing how science works is it's so important for your, the rest of your professional lives and your personal lives. If you go into teaching, if you go to policy, working for government, if you work in industry, in the pharmaceutical industry, if you're a communications expert, knowing how science works in the laboratory, how it's run by humans, will be immensely helpful. And the last one, family dinners. You know, if you've got that pesky uncle who goes on about conspiracy theories, if you can give them a real life example, well, look, I've worked in a lab. I know these are human beings, they're working really hard, they're intelligent, they make mistakes, they go back, they check, they do it again. Those sort of skills are fantastic for your future. Already talked about if you're interested in a career in research, honours is probably the key 
well, the simplest way to go about that. So if you want to do a PhD, you either need to do honours, which is your one year degree, or a master's, which is one and a half to two years. I'll put an asterisk up there because honours is kind of this weird Australian New Zealand thing, which nobody else in the world knows about. I'm here to spruik honours, so I probably shouldn't tell you this, but I did honours in Melbourne. I went to do a PhD in Switzerland. I spent five years there working hard, wrote a thesis, printed it out, took it to the great office, and they said, oh, Herr Burke, you're not eligible to do a PhD here in Switzerland. And I'm like, I wish you told me that five years ago. <laughs> and thankfully, my boss was a very uh, persuasive person. He got on the phone and used his Jedi powers of persuasion to tell them that I was, in fact, eligible to do a PhD in Switzerland. But the, the take-home message there is that PhD overseas, it's a little bit more complicated. It is possible to go through straight from honours in Australia to a PhD in uh, US, Europe, Asia, but it can be complicated and you need to do your due diligence and work out what their requirement, entry requirements are. Uh, the other thing, the other asterisk is the masters, it would have to have a, be a masters with a extensive significant research component in order to go on to a PhD. A purely coursework by, masters by coursework wouldn't necessarily get you into a PhD program. But research is, uh, it's a wonderful, accelerating uh, uh, career. And so if that's what you're interested in, even if you don't know, but you're thinking maybe research, one year honours is a great way to put your toe in, test it out. You might love it, you might hate it. It's only one year. Domestic, local Australian resident students are eligible for Commonwealth supported places, correct me if I'm wrong, CSPs which is a potential advantage over masters where you may have to pay full fees. Also, as Rich has mentioned, improves your career prospects. If I was a prospective employer and I had two CVs and they were pretty much identical, one had done a straight BSc, the other one had done a BSc with honours, nine times out of 10, I'm gonna be picking up the phone to the person with honours. Another advantage I always say is that sometimes I get undergrads contacting me and saying, can you be a referee for me, provide a reference? And I'm like, well, yes, because I feel that's important. But there's not a lot I can say. I can say this student did my unit and they did well and they engaged. That's all I can really say. It's, it's uh, unfortunate, I'd love to get to know all of my undergraduate students, but that's the, that's the way it is. Whereas if someone is on honors with me, I've known this person intensively for eight months and I can give a very detailed, normally very positive reference for that person and that will be really reassuring for any prospective employer. So it really does improve your career prospects. Choosing a project can be really challenging. I put up this slide for my, the biology students because I'm saying, look how many people are doing genetics and genomics in the School of Biological Science. You could do honours with any of these people and they're all got two or three projects and you're like, oh, where do I start? And my advice is, if you think back through your undergraduate units, is there one or two academics that you just loved and felt you could get along with for eight months and just go and talk to them? So rather than trolling through pages and pages and pages of honours projects, looking for one that takes your fancy, maybe work out who you think you can work with first of all and see if they've got some projects and see if they have places for you. And I just wanted to finish off, and I noticed exactly the same words on your last slide, and we didn't collaborate, but really, we, we think it's a fantastic year. We want as many undergraduate students as possible to do honours, because it's really hard work. Uh, pushes you in ways you've never been pushed before, but it's also incredibly rewarding, and that fun aspect that you get to meet a whole bunch of other students who are going through the same thing, 